started out pretty wet in the year, so it took kind of a long time before I could start putting in my garden. And then it was a little bit too dry. <laughs> But we've had rain for the past few days, though, so things are starting to pop up now. This is a type of white sweet corn. And I've got my climbing beans. Beets here. And one of the worst weeds that I have, I've forgotten the name of it. But they're always just everywhere. Some squash. A lot of purslane, which has just popped up here on its own, and I decided to leave it all here because it makes a good ground cover. Kind of helps to keep out the weeds, and you can eat it. It's very nutritious. This is self heal. It popped up here on its own too as a weed, but it's actually a medicinal plant. And as I've said before, I like to mix flowers in with the garden. It attracts um, parasitic wasps and things into your garden, which help to keep your pest load down. Sage. A poor eaten cabbage. Looks like slugs have gotten to it. I don't have a lot of luck with brassicas. <laughs> Something always eats them. One little orange. My sunflower, the biggest one. This was the one that had self sown. It's about three and a half foot tall, maybe. Some kale mixed with a lot of baby black eyed Susans. Which are these? I like to use radishes to fill in the spaces between my plants to help keep down um, weeds. And also because they'll survive just fine if things are eating on their leaves. So stuff is attacking the radishes rather than my other plants. So they're kind of a bait plant, but they can take it. And I don't really remember most of what I planted where. <laughs> I was just in such a hurry to get a garden planted that I just threw seeds and made it rain. Orage. It's a good companion plant for tomatoes. All along here I have cucumber plants mixed with some marigolds. And they are in the back so that they can climb up the fence here. Got a lot of calendula. It's a medicinal flower. Mixed in. Some more borage. Some squashes. We have a baby squash. I'm so excited for fried squash. Got some more cucumber. Climbing up this side. And peppers. I don't remember what type. That is a purple sweet pepper. Whew, the sun is hot today. A volunteer tomato. I probably have to move it somewhere that I can stake it. Borage. 
These are marigolds. They haven't flowered yet. But I've got them mixed all in with everything. They're a very sm strong smelling plant, which helps to mask the smell of your vegetables so that it's harder for your pests to find them. Beets. Got some more kale back here. Mixed in with some calendula flowers. Some black-eyed Susans, some barrage, a lot of dill, got a lot of marigolds, some nasturtiums, watermelon, a lot of dill mixed in. Looks like we have a tomato. I use some baling twine to twist around this tomato plant and attached it to the stake for it to climb. Different kinds of melons. I don't remember what. I've got dill, kale, some turnips, small tomatoes. This is a little yellow melon. That's what I remember of that. Nasturtiums mixed in. Beets. Some more baby sunflowers. Basil. don't remember what I put here. It's some kind of a winter squash. There are lots of mushrooms growing in the wood chips. Back up pumpkins for the Whistle Thicket pumpkin growing contest. But it looks like the squash bugs have made their way over here, unfortunately. I'm going to squish. I'm going to check up underneath these leaves to see if I can find any adults. And here we are. There's an adult squash bug. I don't see any more adults or eggs on that one. This one's very small. Let's look at this one. And I don't see anything. Lots of mushrooms. Lots of baby calendulas. And here's goth bed. which I planted all from seed, even the tomato and pepper plants. But they've come up and they're starting to grow. We need to weed. These things, ugh. Tomatoes. These are black radishes that I found in my totes full of seeds. And I thought, oh, I better put those in a goth bed because they're black. Peppers. The black corn. Which I'm going to have to find some way to stake these. Those were the those dark, dark uh, winter squashes. They almost look black. The barrages that came up on their own. Tomatoes! A 
planted a lot because I knew direct selling tomatoes, um, many of them probably wouldn't come up. And if they did, it would be hard for them to survive on their itty bitty. So I'm going to have to separate those. But look at this lettuce. Beautiful red lettuce. And it had a row of another red lettuce in between these, but they did not come up. The seeds were not good. So I replanted, and I've got tiny little seedlings. Purple basil. I just planted them teeny tiny little babies. Baby purple basils. The black nebula carrots, which weren't really black, but they were very dark, dark purple. Different black and purple peppers. So goth bed is coming along. Planted a little late, but everything is up. Here are the beans, looking good. Beans. It'll be time to pick beans soon. Difference in the flowers, the color. These are the purple beans. <gasps> okay. Oh, yay! Big fat blueberries. So good. I'm going to sit here and eat all of these in front of you guys. You can live vicariously through me eating these blueberries. They're nice and big and fat. Ones. I'm really gonna have to redo this strawberry bed. There's just so much grass in it. I'm gonna have to cardboard it for a season. The potatoes, which I need to add some more compost to. They have got potato bugs. They're neat looking, I guess, but they're bad to have. I remember when I was a kid, when we would have a garden at my great-grandfather and grandmother's house. And this garden was probably two acres big that the whole family took care of. We had our own little sections, each family, where we planted our garden. And my great-grandpa would have about a fourth of that garden planted in potatoes. And I just, I remember being out there with my parents weeding the garden and stuff, and my papa would be out there for hours with two rocks going through all the potatoes, squishing the potato bugs. But that's the garden tour for right now.